How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm good. It's nice to meet you. You too. I, do you often say the word titular? Thank you for recognizing that. It wasn't, I have a little thing written down I was going to say about you. The word titular wasn't there, but I love saying it so much that I shoehorned it in there. Isn't it a great word? It's something. You know, you're not crazy about titular? It's, it's, I hear tit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I stop. And then I stop listening. And I'm like, what are we talking about? You hear like a, woo right after that. <laughs> Like, did he just say, did he say <laughs> this, this whole conversation has been bleeped up to this point. That's what's going on. <laughs> I, I tell you what I find interesting about you. Well, it's a bunch of stuff, but I was looking at your Twitter, which is always a dangerous way to start an interview. And I noticed that when you watch the show, it's almost like you, you weren't in it. You sort of <laughs> watch the show as a fan. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do. I, I, um, I don't know if it's, I have a short term memory, but I, I, it's almost like, I mean, when you're in it, you're so busy thinking about, you know, punch left, quip, punch right. Like you're just so, you know, there's so much going on. Um, and then when you watch it with the effects, especially in a genre show, like you get to see it in a way that you didn't see it on the day. And then I love watching my friends because I'm not in all the scenes with them. So I've read it and I'm like, oh my God, that's, I love this line. And then they say the line. I'm like, oh, you, get, you said the line I read. And that's so good. Um, so yeah, it's, it's fun. And it's just such a fun show. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, how do I say this? In Canadian television, I have- I don't like where this is going. I have not met everybody who is on a show that they love. And I think it's really wonderful that I can tell that you're a fan of your show. And I know that seems like such a low bar, but I think, you know, I think, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it's such a, there's something, there's such a freedom in the show because we don't try to, you know, a lot of people have been like, what's the tone? And I'm like, well, <laughs> it's a lot. Um, but, but that's my favorite thing about it. You cannot get bored being on this show. Um, and, and Emily, our showrunner, has a strict no a-hole policy. So it's just kind of like, you know, if it's between two people for a role, she's like, okay, which one's not a jerk? <laughs> which one do we want to be around? And that's kind of bled into the whole show and it makes it a really nice atmosphere. When the fans were writing like letters and, you know, songs and they bought the billboard in Times Square when it looked like it was going to be over, were you? Were you worried too? I mean, I've been worried since season one. For, for me, it was like, I didn't think we'd go past season one. And so um, I was always worried. <laughs> um, and, you know, in season two, I got pregnant. I was worried because I, I was worried that they would say, oh, just kidding. We're going to take that season two back now. You know, so I've always been worried. Um, but I also, I think by, by the time we got to season four, I think I knew that the fans were so passionate and really had our backs. I, yes, I was worried, but I was also like, this is going to be really hard to ignore. Like it wasn't just one billboard. It was billboards over and over for weeks in Times Square. I mean, the dedication, um, and the quiet, the respectful persistence of these fans was impossible to ignore. What did that, what did that mean to you? Well, it just, we've always said that it feels like a family, which sounds so cheesy, but in, unless you're in it. Um, and then when you're in it, it feels like a family and it feels like we have all these people who have our backs. Um, and so it's, it's definitely, it feels like a safe place with these fans. What was the first day of shooting like after the campaign had been successful? Well, wow. It was just, I, I had actually directed. So they fought to get it back 
And then I, we came back and I was directing. And so for me, it was, it was surreal. It was like, not only had they fought to get us this show, but because they got us the show, I now had the chance to direct. It was, it was just kind of, um, it was monumental and it, I guess it should have felt, uh, scary. <laughs> like scary? I better not let them down. Sorry. Yeah. Scary. Like you better not let them down. Yeah. Yeah. But I know that I couldn't, I know that I couldn't, I didn't, I talked to some fans on Twitter and they were just like, nothing you do is going to disappoint us. And I was like, that's exactly how I felt. So it just, I just had fun and it was so, it was, it was exciting. What did you think of your character? I mean, you're four, four years into it now. What did you think of your titular character uh, the first time you read about her? The first time I read about her? Yeah, the first time you, you got the script and you realized you were going to play this person. What did you what did you make of her? I immediately was like, she's titular. <laughs> and I was like, good for her. Good for her. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I read her the way I read her, which is quirky and fun. But sometimes that's just how I read things. And then the people making the show are like, Okay, now do it normal. <laughs> and um, so I loved her. I loved what I thought she could be, but I didn't think we'd be allowed to do that. And then I met Emily and she was just, so for example, I, um, you know, I just pictured her having to be really like this action heroine, you know, very stoic, very... I don't know. Clint Eastwood, yeah. old timey, westerny. Yes, kind of something we've seen before, but in a titular female package. Right. And uh, whatever that means. And but and then I met Emily, and she's like, you know what? If you're not good at any of this, that's actually better because she's just she's not a magic being. Like she doesn't have superpowers. She can shoot the gun, but she herself doesn't have you know, she can't jump over tall buildings. So if she drops the magic gun, that's kind of funny. Do that. Um, and so she gave me permission to have a character that we really haven't seen before as a hero, not be perfect and not have it all together and not even be good at it. The showrunner you're referring to is is, is Emily Andrus. The, um, the Emily you're referring to is the showrunner, Emily Andrus. I should say that. And uh, I want to hear a trailer for the second half of season four. Take a listen to this. My whole life has been a curse. All I want is to stop feeling guilty for what I am when what I am is necessary. We're really worried about you. You're hunting all the time. Oh, God! You're not really sleeping. I'm totally sleeping. Now you're passing out. That's not the same thing. That's a clip from the second half of season four of Winona Earp. Melanie Scrifano, the star of the titular star of the show, joins me now. So in, in this season alone, um, you've had de- 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 excuse me, demonic nuns, zombie scientists, a swamp witch. Yes. Do you ever read the script and go... I know any. Yeah. <laughs> As, as Emily would say. <laughs> do you ever do you ever have a moment and go, how did they, where did they come up with this? Uh, no, if you ever meet Emily, she's just, she's bubbling over with ideas. Um, and she's the most, the, the quickest, funnest person you'll ever meet. So t- to her, like if it makes her laugh, it's going in. Or if it, you know, like she's fearless in that way. Um, what blows my mind is the, how many ideas that these writers have, because I'm like, she walks to the store and then she gets lost. And then that's my idea for an episode. <laughs> I, I got that. Um, so, so yeah, they're, they're super fearless, which I love. I'm glad you're not, I mean, I'm sure you're a talented writer, but I'm glad you're not writing this one. <laughs> she went to the store, she went to Loblaws, got lost in the aisle, had to come home. Yeah. What was the subtext? Fear. Fear. Fear, honey. 
Uh, if you're just tuning in, my guest is Melanie Scrifano. She's the star of the Canadian TV show Winona Earp. Earlier this year, Out Magazine declared that Winona Earp will forever be a game changer for queer women on TV. And I should say one of the main love stories on the show is between two women, Waverly Earp and her fiance Nicole Hott. What do you think the show gets right about portraying queer relationships? Well, as a straight woman, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I can only comment on what I've observed or what I've witnessed, which is just that people have been really grateful to have representation that isn't, um, uh, how do I say like a miserable or, you know, one of them dies because that was, that was a big thing in the media um, or in, in storytelling in particular was um, queer characters in particular women being killed off. Yeah. Um, especially, so, especially in sci-fi that comes, that comes up a lot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that really, I think, that people really found a safe place with our show because they felt like we wouldn't do wrong by them. Once they saw that, uh, spoiler in season one, um, Nicole is actually wearing a bulletproof vest. It was like a weight was lifted and, and um, people were able to breathe and say, we're safe here. Do you ever get the chance to talk about the impact you have the show? With, with fans? With, your, with yourselves. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, and I think we're careful about, because the problem is we, we don't ever want to act like we know more than we do or be some kind of like guru type, you know, yeah. we're just people playing these characters. We didn't write them. Um, but, uh, we're, we're, we're very grateful for the impact we've had and we just hope to do right by it. And, you know, um, a lot of times, not just in our fandom, but just in general, people uh, turn to their favorite characters for comfort. And sometimes, especially when you meet them at conventions and things like that, it can be, I, I always get nervous about, um, hearing people's stories and then I don't, I don't ever want to say the wrong thing. If certainly if we're dealing with mental health and yeah. things like that, it, we all are very nervous about being like, please, please uh, take what you take, whatever strength you can from us. But then also we're just people and we don't know. Yeah. We're not doctors. What do they tell you about why the, maybe, maybe more broadly, what do they tell you about what, why do, what do folks in general, erpers tell you about why, the show resonates so much with them. A common theme is um, is uh, identity, really, and just kind of seeing parts of themselves represented, um, and and there are parts of each of our characters being represented because none of us are meant to represent all <laughs> women or men. Um, yeah, but. But there are certainly we all have strengths that um, I think people go that that made me realize I'm stronger. For me, I'll say for my character, a lot of people say like, "Oh, I'm really messed up. I I am I'm a screw up, but um, I still have value and I I'm, I can still be a hero kind of thing." And um, that's really important to me because that's how I felt. I felt like nobody's going to hire me to play Winona because she's so, she's an action hero. And then Emily was like, no, actually, exactly. What you're doing is, is right because it's not whatever the stereotypical right is. You, you never thought you'd ever get a role like this? No, no. Um, no, I, I told this story once before, but I remember in high school, a guy told me that I would be uh, something like I, you'd be hotter if you didn't joke around so much or something like that. And it always stuck with me. And I, and I was like, Oh, my personality is offensive. Like it's, it, people don't like women who joke around or whatever. And, but also how do you, how do you not do what you do? Yeah. Um, especially if you're not hurting anyone. I, um, and so 
when Winona came along, yeah, like I said, I, I saw her in a kind of a quirky way. And I was like, action heroes can't be quirky. Like that's, you know, especially a female action. I don't know. I just couldn't yeah. compute. And so, but I didn't know how else to do it. So I just did it. And I'm just very grateful that the person on the other end was somebody who was like, I totally get it. And we want to see more of that. Well, And it sounds like that acceptance of who you are yes. is what your fans see as well as them, they themselves being accepted for who they are. Exactly. That's what I was trying to say before. And I, I don't have the, uh, for some reason, the words aren't coming to me, but, but yeah, it's exactly. It's sort of going you as you are, are what you're meant to be. Like this is whatever you're bringing to the party. We want it. Um, that's how Emily is. And that's, I think exactly to your point, people, can taste that and they feel safe with us. And, yeah. You know, um, maybe this is a good way to close things off. I mean, it's looking like season four will be the last season, but I know Emily Andrus, the showrunner, is fighting for a fifth season. How, how hopeful are you about it? Well, it's... I, I don't know. I think because of, honestly, because of everything that's been going on in the world, with the pandemic and the uncertainty, I, I just, I don't know. And that's okay. I think, um, I think if we end season four the way we ended it, I am incredibly happy. I'm, um, it was the most wine on a herb the show has ever been in, in the finale and and I mean that in the best way possible. And it's got everything and I'm proud of it. And I'm proud of us. And four seasons is nothing to to sniff your nose at. Is that an expression? Yeah, I believe sniff your nose at it is the, is the expression they use. I think it is. I know. Yeah, it's definitely sniff, sniff your nose at it. Okay. What are you most proud of then? You said, you know, I'm so proud of it. What are you most proud of? Uh... I guess like holding it together when things got tough. Um, Cause you know, for me being the lead of a show, it was my first time. And um, there were a lot of really tough moments and I could have gone one way and I went another way and I'm proud of the kind of um, decisions I made. I, I, I had a baby in one of the seasons and literally had the baby like four days after I had the baby on the show so that it's always going to be a such a special somehow I shot the season with all the ups and downs emotionally um with, with a human growing inside like it, there's just it's just become such a part of my DNA that um I'm just it was an honor to be a part of it it's been a pleasure to talk to you about this thank you so much Thank you, Tom.